Hey everybody, it's Ronette Rollins from Praise 104.1 and it is my honor to welcome you to our fall revival. I don't know about you, but I need to be revived. It's time for us to be uplifted and get us geared up to finish out the rest of this year. So if you're ready, do me a favor, share this video because somebody is going to need what is being sung or what is being preached. So be sure to share this video. All right. We've got some great preachers in store for you guys for the week. We've also got some great artists that are going to come and share God's word in song. So please do share this video with somebody else. All right. So let's get into it. So to get us ready for the word of God, we've got an artist that is going to come minister in song. He's a two-time Grammy nominee, stellar award winner, a best-selling author and speaker. Y'all give it up for James Fortune. You never let me die. Praise 104.1. For a revival, we got a simple message to remind you that God will never let you down. All of my life, one thing hasn't changed. Yes. In my lowest moments, in your arms, I remain. Who? Who can I trust? I've been lied to so much. Yes. If not for your grace, I know. We want to testify. Today, make this confession about you. God, you have never, never, never. Here it is. Said you never let me go. God, said you never let me go. You have never, never let me go. Praise 104.1. If you know he's never let you down, say it. It's the fall revival, so we're gonna be honest. Say
somebody sing it. I'm gonna trust you. Cause you never let me down. I'm gonna trust you. Cause you never let me down. Listen, you're sitting at home and maybe at work at your office. I need you to remind yourself that God has always been there. That if you look back over your life, He was good back then and He's been good since then. So I don't care what you're feeling right now. I want you to make this declaration that despite what I'm going through, I make a choice that I'm going to trust you. See, trusting God is not a, it's not a, it's not a feeling. It's a, it's a decision you're making right now. You say, God, I make a choice to trust you. Say, I'm going to trust you. Cause you never let me die. I'm going to trust you. Cause you never let me die. Cause you never let me down. Say it. Cause you never let me down. Cause you never let me down. Somebody take the vow. Cause you never let me down. Somebody praise him like you know. God is turning your situation around.
right, and solve James Fortune. Thank you so much for helping us to kick off this first night of our fall revival. Now it's time for the word of God. And this brother is someone I know. He's Virginia's own Reverend Dr. Taft Quincy Heatley, pastor of the Shiloh Baptist Church in Alexandria, Virginia. Reverend Heatley is a 1998 graduate of Morehouse College, where he received a Bachelor of Science degree in mathematics with a minor in physics. Go ahead, Pastor. In 2007, Dr. Heatley completed his Master of Divinity degree at the Princeton Theological Seminary. We're excited to have Dr. Heatley kick off our revival. So let's get ready for the word of God. Preach Reverend Dr. Heatley. Praise 104.1. It is so good to be with you for your fall revival. God bless you. Uh, this is the Shiloh Baptist Church of Alexandria, Virginia. I'm the Reverend Dr. Tab Quincy Heatley, and I'm so delighted to share the word of God with you. Amen. Would you pray with me? Lord God, I ask now that the words in my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength and my redeemer, Lord God. I prayed this prayer many times before. I'm not able and competent and sufficient of the task that stands before me. However, with your help of the Holy Ghost, Allow your word to come forth with power and conviction. Truly, Lord, drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love that I owe. Dear Lord, I give myself away. It's all that I can do. This is my prayer in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The scripture for this evening is the book of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, the first through the second verse. We're going to read those two verses with sermon emphasis on the second verse but here is the word of the lord but now thus says the lord who created you o jacob and he who formed you o israel fear not for i have redeemed you i have called you by your name you are mine when you pass through the waters i will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overflow you when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned nor shall the flame scorch you Amen. Amen. This is divine reassurance or the tagline is God's got me. Can you say that with me in the chat line, wherever you are, God's got me. Let's go to the word of the Lord. The setting of our text is 8th century BC Israel. The prophet Isaiah has issued words of judgment that have come from Jehovah. God has had enough. Both the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah have forsaken their God. Kings and rulers were not loyal to the God of Israel. And now Israel and Judah prostituted and prostrated themselves before idols who were not divine and were devoid of power. God had enough. For Israel, the northern kingdom, the Assyrians would overtake them and their land. These events have transpired at the time of our text. Yet for Judah, the destruction, demolition, and debacle were forthcoming. God was raising up Nebuchadnezzar and the Chaldeans to remove Judah from their land and into captivity. How could a people betray their God? How could a nation forsake its creator? How could kings knowingly dismiss the decrees of the Lord. For 39 chapters, Isaiah raises and answers these questions. But something happens around chapter 40. Grace arrives. God brings comfort to a people who breached the covenant. Before Judah would experience the discipline of God, Jehovah informs them that he would still be the compassionate and gracious God. This God does not change his character or attributes, even in his anger and disappointment towards the people he loves. Church, this is the God you serve, a God whose compassion runs so deep that he will comfort you even in your mess mistakes and mishaps God says in your mess still my character is at stake and I cannot deny who I am at your expense can I say that one more time God says even in your mess my character is at stake and I cannot deny who I am at your expense no matter what the state of affairs God will be gracious and God will be merciful and God will be just and God will be God and if this God 
who comforted Judah before they went into captivity is the same God who rules as the sovereign Lord of all creation today, then surely this God can comfort me because my God does not change with the shifting of the wind, but is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Church, if God is able to comfort Judah 2,700 years ago, then surely this God can bring me and you comfort and reassurance, divine reassurance assurance today. God had Judah and God has me. Somebody needs to declare this this evening. God's got me. Come on, say it with your chest. God's got me. Come on, preach to yourself and encourage yourself and say, God's got me. This is the divine reassurance that God gives to Judah in our text. This is the truth spoken to Judah and this word is still relevant for us. We have divine reassurance in chaos, calamity, and confusion. Listen to our text this morning, Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, O praise 104, O Shiloh, or whatever your place is, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine when you pass through the waters. I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. Key word in this text is overflow. The word means to overwhelm, overpower, i.e. oppress, or control another by using force as a figurative extension of a sweeping flood that destroys an object. Church, life can be overwhelming. Life has a tendency and a proclivity to overwhelm us and overtake us with tragedy. The news cycle overfloods and overwhelms us with the sensationalism of this COVID-19 pandemic. Every hour more deaths, every hour more cases, every hour more confusion, every hour more discouragement, every hour it is something. And this is the overwhelming flood that's just related to the pandemic, never mind the normal stresses and strains of life like communication and marriage and, and challenges of parenting and, and homeschooling and dysfunctional family and friends and, and grieving and bereavement and sickness unrelated to COVID and, and retirement and, and estate planning and, and care for elderly parents and the psychological effects of trauma. Life has a propensity to be too much and sometimes it can feel like a flood. What do you do when your life is too overwhelming? What do you do when you seek to stay informed, but, but you're just inundated with information? What do you do in all this overwhelming flood called life? We have a word from the Lord this day, and it is that the floods of life will not swallow you up because with God, you have a filter. During the first winter in my home in the DMV, I had an air handler that went out. And in fact, our HVAC system was not operating correctly. I woke up and it was 50 degrees in my house. And so we called our warranty and they sent out a technician, found out that it was a mere electrical problem. I just needed to turn the circuit breaker back on or, or replace the circuit breaker. But the technician arrived to my home and he told me some valuable information. He said, listen, to make sure that your system is functioning properly, you need to make sure you change your filter every 90 days. He says that the filter ensures that the debris, the dirt, and dust do not create certain parts of the system to hinder its performance. You see, it prevents unnecessary material from clogging and overwhelming the system. The filter helps lower the stress of the machine from overworking, overheating, doing damage to its operation, or just breaking down. Hmm. Praise 104.1, in order to prevent feeling overwhelmed and overworked, like you're going to break down or you're overheated or inundated with light, you need to utilize your filter. Yes, you have a filter, and your filter is the Word of God. The living Word activated by the Spirit of the living God will help you sift through the mess of this age and catch all the debris that life 
throws towards you so you can maintain some sense of sanity and stability. Will you come to the word of God with me? In this COVID-19 era, you have a filter. And when the coronavirus has you anxious, you need to check your filter. Be anxious for nothing. But with everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Hallelujah. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. When you are consumed with worry, you need to check your filter. Therefore, do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Here it is, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you when life as you confuse, you need to check your filter because the Bible says uh, thou will keep you in perfect peace uh, if you keep your mind stayed on him. Uh, when COVID has you afraid, uh, you need to check your filter for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. When you feel under attack, uh, go to your filter. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that arises against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn for this is the heritage of the saints and their vindication is from me, says the Lord. Hallelujah. When your finances have you perplexed, uh, you need to check your filter. Give and it will be given to you. Uh, good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, uh, it will be turned to you. When your finances have you foolish, check your filter and continue to bring all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be food in my house and test me in this prove me says the Lord of hosts if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that you will not have a room to take it in hallelujah when the world has you we check your filter because the filter says my grace is sufficient my strength is made perfect in human weakness. When you think that your mistakes condemn you, check your filter. Therefore, now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. When the news of COVID puts you in a defeated mindset, grab your filter and say, what shall I say to all these things if God is for me? then who can be against me? Hallelujah. When the COVID normal, the new normal has you drained with energy, check your filter. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him uh, and he shall direct your path uh, when your world has you insecure go to your filter and know that you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. All of this translates to the truth. The word of God gives you re divine reassurance from the God of your salvation, no matter the pandemic, no matter the epidemic. Through it all, God says, I got you. Somebody say, God's got me. Hallelujah. Judah may have given up on God, but God is not going to give up on them. And the same thing is true with me and you. Even if you give up on God, God will not give up on you. The Bible says even when we are faithless, he's faithful. Somebody say, God's got me. So when you pass through these waters, God says, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, it will not sweep you over. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you abrace. God gives Judah divine reassurance. And we have this divine reassurance too. God's got me. Church, here's the first thing I want to tell you. We must understand that trouble in life is unavoidable. Here it is. God says through Isaiah, when you pass through the waters and through the rivers, when you walk through the fire, when you walk through the fire. God is giving the news to Judah that trouble is on the horizon. They were walking into captivity and adversity would be amongst them. There are dangers in life that must and will happen. And maybe you're like me. You would love to have a life free of problems, danger, calamity, and mess, but it is simply not possible and this is not the word of the Lord, especially if you are a Christian. The Christian life is met with trouble. Here it is. The Bible says itself, yes, all who desire 
to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. The Reverend Dr. H. Beecher Hicks, Senior Servant Emeritus of the Metropolitan Baptist Church of Washington, D.C., in his classic book, Preaching Through a Storm, says that in life you are either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or on your way into a storm. Child of God, there is a storm in every season of life. This has not and will not change. You will have to deal with something at some point. Some wise men, in fact, told me that life was nothing more than a series of attempts to overcome hardships. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. Here it is. You need to be of good cheer. As Jesus says, I have overcome the world. I need my filter in trouble. That is the word of God because it directs me to the God who will keep me in the trouble. In fact, let me suggest this. I suggest that you have not fully experienced God until you have had some storms, some trouble, some tribulation, and some despair. I stand here as a witness to the power of to the provision and protection of God because I have seen trouble and I found out the character of my God in the time of trouble. It was in trouble I discovered that the provision of God was enough. When I didn't have enough, I discovered the healing prowess of God when I became sick, I discovered the wisdom of God when I had problems that I could not solve. I discovered that God would fight for me when the weapons were formed against me. That's my testimony. How about you? Did you discover that God, who God said God was in the midst of trouble? Did you find out that God was a way maker when you needed a way to be made? Did you discover that God was your captain on the stormy seas of life? Did you discover that God is a miracle worker in the middle of your hell where you need a miracle to be worked to this day? It is inexplicable as to how you survive. Come on, think about everything you've been through and what you've seen and what you've had to endure and the fact that you're still here and that you overcame and, and you conquered. You have a hard time explaining it, but you do know that you are still standing because if it had not been for the Lord on your side, come on, praise 104 saying that your help is in the name of the Lord. This truth was revealed to you in trouble. Hallelujah. Trouble will happen in this life. But here's the good news. God is still God. Even though the trouble is happening, God is still God. Why? Because God says that trouble is temporary and not permanent. Look at the text. Verse 2, it says, when you pass through the waters and through the rivers, when you walk through the fire. The operative word is through. It's a preposition that means moving in one side and out of the other side. It's a channel. It's a process or intermediate stage. Intermediate stage. Jehovah is in trying to enlighten Judah that whatever it is they face, it would be temporary. Yes, the period of 70 years of captivity is not an indefinite sentence. Babylon was not meant to become a permanent place of a residence. The time away from their homeland was not an eternity. No, it was temporary. It was only an intermediate phase of life. Trouble will come, but you will only pass through. Someone needs to hear that this evening as we think about this pandemic. We've been in it for about 18, 19, 20 months now, and it seems like it will be here forever, but we are passing through. Yes, it's a wreck havoc upon our nation and world. In America, 47 million people have contracted it. Over 740,000 people have lost their lives. My God, even home has become the sanctuary where we worship and has become the home office and the daycare center and the school. All at once, it can be overwhelming. But praise 104, I'm here to inform you that this too shall pass. What is more, we're only passing through, hallelujah. We will pass through 2021 like we passed through 2020 and 2019 and 2018 and 2017 and 2015. You can say the rest. 
But there's one thing that's still true. The same God who was with us at the outset of this pandemic is the same God who is with us now because he was with us then and he'll be with us now. And this God is the eternal one who says we are just passing through. Trouble does not last always. We're just passing through. You like what David said in Psalm 30 and 5, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Trouble is not eternal, but our God is. Can I say that one more time for you to get this in your spirit? Trouble is not eternal, but our God is. COVID will not be here forever. We're just, just, just passing through. Here's what I love. Here's what I love. That no matter the trouble you pass through, the last thing I want to tell you is that God is with you. Hallelujah. Praise 104, worshipers of God and friends and guests. Just as God was with Noah and his family in the flood, just as God was with the baby Moses in the basket in the Nile River, just as God was with the children of Israel, through the waters of the Red Sea, just as God was with the children of Israel, through the waters of the Jordan River, just as Jehovah was with Jonah in the sea before he was washed up to shore, God will be with you through all the waters. Yes, God will be your raft, and God will be your paddle. God will be your flotation device. God will be your rudder and your sail. God will be your flippers and your wetsuit. God will be your oxygen and your snorkel. In fact, God will be your life jacket and preserver because with God, you don't even need to know how to swim. Because when you pass through the waters, he says, I'll be with you. And not only will God be with you in the waters, but God will be with you in the fire. Just as God was with Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, you probably know them as their Chaldean Babylonian names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In the fiery furnace, God was with them. And with God, you are inflammable. Did you hear me? I said, with God, you are inflammable. You don't need to be a trained or a skilled firefighter to walk with God. No, you won't need to stop, drop, and roll to walk with God because through the fire, you will not catch on fire. You will not even need a fire extinguisher because you don't need to fight the fire because you're just passing through the flames. And the Lord God will be your fire suit because he is with you, child of the living God. You need to declare this again. God's got me. Come on, somebody say it till it gets down in your spirit. God's got me, and he's got me in you because he lives in us. Because my Bible says uh, that the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead uh, dwells in you. Uh, he who raised Christ from the dead uh, also gives a life to your mortal bodies. Hallelujah. Through his spirit that dwells in you. Uh, that means God's got me. Uh, wherever I go, uh, God's got me. And wherever I tread, God's got me. Wherever I walk, God's got me. Wherever I run, God's got me. When I'm asleep, God's got me. Wherever I lay, God's got me. When I'm discouraged, God's got me. When I'm encouraged, God's got me. When I'm in pain, God's got me. When I'm in prosperity, God's got me. And when I die, God's got me because I'm going home to live with God. Through it all, hallelujah, God's got me. I got some questions. Is there anybody out there who know that God's got you? Is there anybody out there who knows that God is with you? Is there anybody out there who knows that God will carry you? Is there anybody out there who knows that God's got you? Can you say this with me? He walks with me. And he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. Hallelujah. Somebody say, God's got me. Somebody say it down deep in your spirit. God's got me. And if you know that God's got me, why don't you act like you're in the sanctuary right now? In fact, your home is the sanctuary. Why don't you get your good Baptist lean on and throw your head back and say, yeah. 
Come on, I want to hear you through the airwaves. Say, yeah, 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 yes. Hallelujah. You can say it one more time. Say, yes. Hallelujah. God's got me. God's got me. God's got you. Divine reassurance. God's. God's got you. Don't you ever think that God is not with you. The Lord, who is our keeper, and our shade at our right hand, he's got us. God's got you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be blessed people of God. Go with the power in knowing that God's got you. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you so much, Dr. Heatley, for that powerful word tonight. Now, family, if you want to hear more of Dr. Heatley's preaching, just be sure to tune in every Sunday morning at 6 a.m. on Praise 104.1 for Shiloh Baptist Church's radio broadcast. And for all the things that are happening, so exciting, uh, happening at Shiloh Baptist Church, you can log on to their website at shiloh-bc.org. Well, y'all, this concludes night number one of our fall revival, and we've got so much more to come. On night number two, tomorrow night, our guest preacher is Dr. Maurice Watson, pastor of the Metropolitan Baptist Church. So again, be sure to share this video and get ready for night number two of our fall revival. I'm Ronette Rollins. Have a good night, everybody.